What's up guys, this is Forrest Knight and welcome to iDev Journey episode 14 where I take you along with me on my iOS development journey where I learn iOS development, develop my first app, and turn that app into a business. But first, I have a few announcements regarding the channel. I, of course, do the iDev Journey series, but I want to implement two more series. The first I started last week is called My Tech Setup, where I went over my tech setup and what I use it for, I went over some specs and whatnot, but I asked y'all to submit your tech setups to me. I want to see everything. I mean, it could be your camera and your PC and your laptop and your, you know, your peripherals and whatnot and what you do with it. So for me, it was iOS development and creating content and a little bit of gaming on this back behind me. And I want to know what you do. Are you a 3D artist? I have a whole video linked down below where it goes over all the rules for submissions and kind of what I'm looking for from you guys. And the second series, or the third series behind iDev Journey and My Tech Setup would be Rate My App, where you guys submit your apps to me and I review it, I rate it, based on, I think I have five categories, 50 points total, so it's uh, 10 points per category, and I kind of rate it. Uh, the first experience, so kind of, and once I open the app, I'm like, okay, I like this, or I don't really understand what I'm supposed to do. You know, you want to make sure the first experience is a good one. I go over user interface and functionality and, and, and things like that. And, of course, take my opinion with a grain of salt, just like you would your parent or brother. Because if you create an app, you want to get opinions from all sorts of different people. And you want to get it from your mom, for example, and see how she likes it or your little brother and see how he likes it. And you get it from me, someone who is also an iOS developer as well as a user, and you just get feedback from me. And I will, it'll allow you guys to learn, it'll allow me to learn kind of what I like in an app, what I don't like in an app, what I should implement in my future app and whatnot. And I think it'll just be a good learning experience for everybody as well as exposure for y'all, for your tech setup and for your app. And of course, I would want you guys to include any type of social media outlet you have so you guys get exposure because as I grow this channel, if you submit your app or your tech setup, your video will get more and more views and then you'll get more and more traffic to your website or whatever it may be. And also, aside from those three series, I just recently for Christmas got, I got a new mouse. I got a new mouse pad, it covers the whole desk basically, and I got a new tripod. I got a few different things that I want to use and then review for you guys so you know if it's good or not. So stay tuned for those, those should start within the next month. I want to get the Rate My App out within the next few weeks. Uh, we'll see how everything plays out and whatnot. But without further ado, let's get on to the iDev journey. It is lecture or lecture 4, section 4. 49. It is section 4, lecture 59, exercise auto layout. So basically, what, it, what we want to do with auto layout is say you have an iPhone 4. You know, it's a very small screen and you have an iPhone 7. You want your app to be able to scale from an iPhone 4 to an iPhone 7 screen or 7 plus screen at that, all the way up to an iPad in portrait and in landscape. So for example, of course, this is portrait, and then this will be landscape. You want your app to be able to adjust to those. You want it to fit well instead of looked all discombobulated, because I'm sure you've been on some type of websites or been on an app that really isn't optimized for your device, and it's a poor user experience. So that's basically what this auto layout's going for. So let's get on to it. So here at section four, lecture 59, exercise auto layout, like we just discussed. We want the screen to look the same on each device. As you can see, we want to build a layout that looks like these images on the various screen sizes, iPhone 4 inch, iPhone 5.5 inch landscape, and iPad portrait. As you can see, all of them are very similar. You can tell it's the same app, but we want it to adapt to the screen. You know, we want we don't want a little box like say this right here. We don't want the uh, well, we don't want this little iPhone 4 inch to be in the middle of an iPad. We want it to stretch properly. So let's go, go ahead and start that. What you'll see on your screen is me creating this app uh, about 
three times the speed. So if you want to follow along, just lower the settings on YouTube. I mean, keep the quality, but lower the speed, I mean. So lower it to 0.5 or, or something around there, whatever suits you if you want to build it with me. Starting off, we just make a simple single view application in Xcode. I named it Exercise Auto Layout. We're only going to be messing with the main dot storyboard, no need for view controller or any code. We're, we want all of the data that's used on the UI to be in the main dot storyboard, at least as much as we can. So we start off by creating the, the top box. We want, and what I did was just make the color similar to what they were in the examples. We want to duplicate so we have the same exact size boxes at the bottom. And of course we have to set our constraints. So we want to attach these, you know, set the constraints zero to the edge. And I also set a height constraint on the box at top. The bottom left, you want the left and the bottom constraint on and width and height since it's a square and it doesn't need to stretch. And of course the bottom right, we attach that to the right and the bottom. And what I did was control all equals and that basically adapted the constraints. It, it updated the frames. Since it was very skinny on the iPad, I figured I would make it a little bit a little bit taller. And what you just saw is I added in, I introduced a variation. And since that seemed a little bit too easy, I add, I want to add in labels. So on iPad, I wanted to say iPad. And on the iPhones, I wanted to say iPhone. And of course, we want to add new constraints so this is centered inside the boxes well at least inside the blue box that is so right now we made it say iPad and we're going to start off with the success plus what we're going to do is introduce a variation and basically uninstall so there's a checkbox next to the installed we're going to uncheck that and that label is gone and we create a new label for width, regular, height, compact and we make it say iPhone and that'll go across some of the other screens as well but for the others we want to disable iPad keep iPhone and make sure it's centered inside the blue box at the top for all platforms and of course we have to go back and disable the iPhone label on the iPads because we don't want overlap. The iPhone SE of course is different from the others therefore we had to independently disable iPad and now we went to the very traits and we're going to make sure everything looks proper. So we started with the iPhone, now we're on the iPad. And as we could see, it says iPad on the iPad, it says iPhone on the iPhones in the center of the top box. And I was going to run it on the simulator, but it was a bit too slow at the time and I figured with this new, you know, storyboard and the options that we're able to use with it, it's not that big of a deal. And that's the auto layout exercise plus some, the little bit that we added in the iPad for the iPad and the iPhone label for the iPhone and whatnot. And like I said before, be sure if you want to follow along and you really see step by step process, slow down the video. Don't try to listen to my voice because it'll be slowed down and kind of annoying. So just put it on mute and just watch what I do and follow along with that if you want to see the really exact details because this video the one that you just saw on the screen wasn't cut at all. It was just sped up three, three X. So everything's there from start to finish. Um, I'm not exactly sure if that's, ex that's exactly the right way to do it. You know, make the different labels or if you're even supposed to do that, but I figure, you know, why not play around with it? And then as we play around with it more and more, we'll find better ways to do, you know, processes like that. And don't forget if you have a cool tech setup or an app that you want me to rate, Go to the corresponding video, which will be the first episode of either series, and follow the rules listed in the video and in the description. 
and I'll be sure to make a video regarding your setup or app. And for iDev Journey next week, we got over 10 likes on my last video. So as promised, I did the auto layout video, which is this one. And next week, we're going to go over the Party Rock Mansion app. So in the Mark Price iDev course, we created the Party Rock Mansion app. Basically, you know, it's pretty simple. Although you, you, know, you have different feeds in it, you have top video, top songs, uh, and events. But also you're able, we incorporate a web view, so you're able to watch YouTube videos within your app. The YouTube videos that you chose to be in your app, you're able to watch them within your app, which is really cool. So look for that next week, which is actually next year. So I'll see you guys next year in 2017. And until then, have a good one.